Assalamu alaikum. This is uh, Dr. Faria Bukhari from Free Kisan Free Pakistan. First information report. Uh, I, today I'm going to talk about uh, the recent uh, clashes that happened in Kashmir. Um, so apparently the Indian army, uh, they were trying to uh, fight against uh, some rebels and uh, um, they martyred a uh, Kashmiri rebel and in response to that um, the Kashmiris revolted and came out on the streets and protested but this protest was completely peaceful. The only thing that the Kashmiri youth had with them were some stones that they pelted at the Indian soldiers. Uh, they tried uh, tear gas and they tried uh, spicy grenades and uh, they opened fire. This is not, and as a result of that, uh, three kids uh, got martyred and slaughtered by the Indian soldiers. This is not the first time this kind of a scenario has happened. It has been going on for years and years, almost 70 years. We're seeing the same thing happen again and again and again. That Indian army takes no hesitation in firing bullets at uh, peaceful protestants and if it was anywhere else in the world if this was in france or if this was in uk or usa or anywhere in the world uh, the whole world would have been in a state of rage and anger but because these kids were muslims and because these kids were in kashmir which is a predominantly muslim region nobody gives a damn and that is why the only places where you can see someone talking about um, these Kashmiri kids are usually uh, Muslim-run uh, newspapers and Muslim-run media. So technically uh, today, if anybody cares about a Muslim child losing his or her life to such violence, it is only the Muslim media, it is only the Muslim world. The non-Muslim world does not give a damn about this fact. And as far as the humanitarian agencies are concerned, um, including the United Nations, including Amnesty International, including uh, Human Rights Watch, including uh, MSF, including even WikiLeaks, including uh, Julian Assange, I'm still waiting to hear a response from all of them about what happened uh, in the last uh, 48 hours. We still do not have any response. Any significant response that should make a difference in uh, preventing any such escalation of violence against Kashmiri youth. Um, if it were any other region of the world, if this was uh, any other area, uh, they would have by now deployed a United Nations Peace Corps in that area and uh, attempted to save the civilians from so much aggression. In Africa, we have United Nations Peace Corps working where they try to prevent uh, such injuries to uh, peaceful protesters uh, because uh, these kids are very vulnerable to um, aggression and to violence and eventually to death. Um, but when it comes to Kashmir, nobody is taking that initiative. Uh, there are people like uh, Rachel Corey and uh, Kala Muller who actually, they're volunteers, they were, civ they were civilians, they were American um, young girls who took the initiative, they went to uh, war and conflict areas to volunteer to try to provide safety to the school going kids so that they do not get uh, apprehended or um, um, killed by the aggression of the opponent's armies. We, the candid example is um, Rachel Corey, she tried to safeguard um, the children in uh, Palestine and Gaza against uh, IDF's aggression, but she got killed because of that. And uh, then we have Kyla Muller who tried to safeguard the 
kids who were trying to go to school in the conflict zones of Syria and then she got kidnapped by ISIS and then she was converted into a uh, slave uh, and uh, eventually in one of the airstrikes uh, she was eventually uh, killed and martyred. She, these, these uh, American girls who took the initiative and uh, went to these conflict zones, they are not just American heroes, they're also Muslim heroes as well because uh, they tried to safeguard our children. But uh, today I am making this special uh, report and special request to all um, non-Muslim community who have a heart and who have a conscience that you're needed in Kashmir as well because we have a similar scenario in Kashmir where kids cannot go to school because of the increased risk of aggression apprehension from uh, the Indian Army. They have been uh, made blind permanently. Hundreds of kids have now become blind because of the pellet injuries of the Indian Army. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we have had thousands of kids losing their lives just because they tried to pelt some stones at the Army. And that was in response to the fact that they lost their heroes. Now we talk about rebels, we talk about separatists, and then uh, the general media that is sponsored by Modi calls them militants. I ask you a simple question. Um, if you were, you were in your house and someone tried to come inside your house and uh, tried to uh, rape your women, and uh, sodomize your children and torture your family, what will you do? What will be your response? Are you going to just watch them do this in silence or are you going to get up and do something about it? Everybody in the world has a right of self-defense. Everybody. There is no law anywhere in the world that can um, defy self-defense. Whether you are in United States, whether you are in um, in UK, whether you are anywhere in Europe, whether you're in Australia, you can rise in self-defense. But when it comes to Kashmir, self-defense is labeled as militancy. So the kid who was killed um, by um, the Indian Army was trying to defend his people against Indian Army aggression. And he was killed in a house. He was not killed on the streets. He was not killed uh, in the bushes. He was not killed in the jungle. He was killed in a house. So, I mean, this is something that you guys have to think about because um, if, if someone barges into your house and tries to take your life or your family's life, you think that self-defense is warranted and justified and cannot be labeled as militancy. But when it comes to Kashmiris, you call it militancy. Why? Why do you call it militancy? Why is self-defense called militancy in Kashmir? Think about it. Why do you have double standards when it comes to Muslim lives? Why is, uh, why is uh, it that uh, if it is a non-Muslim life, it is self-defense, but when it is a Muslim's life, it is militancy? This is a very important point I want to make today. And then the second point I want to make is that why aren't the United Nations Peace Corps deploying their uh, corps in uh, Kashmir to protect these youth against the aggression of the Indian Army? Why aren't any, why aren't any of these Peace Corps coming to Kashmir to save the lives of these youth who are just trying to pelt some stones? I mean, this is the least they can do to express their anger and their 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 uh, way of expressing uh, their frustration at the fact that they are oppressed and persecuted uh, for years and years, and nobody gives a damn. They are not they are, they are not fighting at the Indian Army. They are not using any weapons of mass destruction. They are not using any kind of arms. They are just using stones and what can a little stone do? So why is India justifying its use of aggression and arms and violence 
against these kids who are just pelting stones at them. This is not justifiable. It is not justifiable, not just in uh, per the Indian constitution, but also per any constitution of the world. It doesn't have to be Sharia. It, any kind of law cannot justify this kind of an attitude. That if someone is pelting stones at you, you go ahead and just kill those kids. That is called genocide. There's a name for it and that name is genocide. And this is a Kashmiri genocide, this is a Muslim genocide, and this is not the first time it is happening. So I, I'm requesting uh, again, I'm making this request to all those uh, non-Muslims who have hearts like Kyla Muller and who have hearts like Rachel Corey and who are humanitarian, who have a heart, who care about humanity, to get up and try to do something about it. I met uh, Kaila's uh, parents, um, you know, I went to her memorial and I really um, compliment her. Uh, she's no more with us, but she's as much a Muslim hero as she is a non-Muslim hero or an American hero. She took the initiative, she had the guards to go there and tell those oppressing the weak that you can't do that. She sacrificed her life, she sacrificed uh, everything to do that. She, she put it at risk. Um, and she's a hero, she'll be remembered forever. We need more people like Kyla, we need more people like Rachel. Because if such people stopped coming to this world, to this op oppressive world, we won't have a world anymore. We are Muslims, right? We, we are trying to protest. We are trying to do whatever we can. We are trying to uh, voice our concerns about this kind of genocide. But we do need help from our non-Muslim brothers and sisters who share this global village with us to stand up against oppression, to stand up against persecution with us. We cannot do this alone. We need your help. We would love to go there. We would love to volunteer with you guys as a team to stand with the Kashmiri youth to help them protest peacefully against the oppression and persecution of the Indian army. We will volunteer, yes we will volunteer, all, Muslim, uh, all Muslims will volunteer with you if you take the stand with us to go to Kashmir today to stand up as a team, make a shield, make a shield of love for these Kashmiri kids so that they can protest peacefully against Indian army aggression. I request all of you to stand up, get up with us, and let's go to Kashmir and save these kids from getting killed when they didn't deserve to be killed. And then I do request the United Nations and the Amnesty International, the Human Rights Watch, to kindly um, uh, highlight this issue and I do want the United Nations to uh, take the initiative of, of deploying a peace corps in Kashmir to protect the civilians against this kind of an aggression. I'm sure if United Nations uh, challenges Modi with imposing sanctions, uh, if it does not, if he does not comply, then Modi will listen. He will have to listen, and the Indian civilians and the Indian. Uh, government will have to listen to uh, this um, because they do worry about the economy a lot. And uh, having said that, uh, I know that we as, uh, uh, we as Muslim nations, we are always being challenged all the time on all kinds of human rights violations. But right now, today, as I speak, we are seeing so many human rights violations happening in the hands of uh, Indian army against Kashmiris and your silence is your consent to the Indian army to continue with this kind of oppression and persecution and genocide. So kindly stop staying silent, get up, speak up and try to do something about it. I'm not asking you to pick up weapons and arms, I'm just asking you to get up, volunteer, go to Kashmir, make a shield of love, protect these kids.
from getting persecuted like this. And I request even the Indian civilians who have a heart and a conscience and who believe in love to volunteer. You don't have to be a Muslim to do that. It's not that only Muslims have a heart. Non-Muslims have a heart too. You can be a Hindu, you can be a Christian, you can be any religion, you can, not, you can be an atheist. It doesn't have to be, you know, related to what religion you have. Because humanity has no religion. So I want you all of you to get up and volunteer and go to Kashmir. And make a shield of love. A shield of love that will protect these kids from getting persecuted, from getting oppressed, from getting kidnapped, from getting sodomized, from getting slaughtered like this just because they tried to build some stones and they were doing that out of frustration because someone was trying to defend their families, their sisters, their mothers from getting raped got killed in a home, not in, not in a bush or in a, not on the road, in a home. Something to think about. But self-defense is something that if you're entitled to, then others should be entitled to as well. And then also think about what I said about the Peace Corps. Because if they can go to Africa and everywhere else in the world, why can't they go to Kashmir? Why can't they? Thank you.